Welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, sorry about that. Um, super busy, which is great. Um, this pandemic has been fantastic for the uh, transportation industry, logistics, uh, all that great stuff. I'm sure you've read a, or heard or watched uh, a ton about um, the supply chain in this country. Uh, we are just absolutely busy as all get out. Um, so that's that's really good. What I wanted to talk about today is uh, a question that I, I, I don't think you necessarily think a ton about, or maybe you do think a ton about this, is repairs to the truck. Uh, how are repairs handled? Um, what happens if you break down out in the world, on the side of the road, you know, whatever it may be. Um, what happens, you know, if you're at a terminal? Um, I'm waiting to unload, so there might be some trucks driving by, so I apologize for any noise that, that comes across, but um, let's let's talk about it. So, obviously, there's, there's two parts to this, and let's first of all talk about cost. Uh, if you are a company driver, you don't worry about repairs at all. Um, if you're a company driver, the company, and, and this goes for any company, this is not just a prime situation. It, it, the prime will handle, and whatever company you drive for, uh, is going to handle repairs to your truck. That includes uh, PM. PM is preventative maintenance, so oil changes, um, replacing you know something as simple as windshield wipers, uh, you know greasing uh, all of the fittings uh, on the chassis and, and on the truck replacing tires you know all that stuff is taken care of by the company that you drive for if you are a company driver so that is not out of pocket that is all taken care of when those things need to get done headlights replaced you know you need a light bulb for, for a headlight company takes care of that stuff um, if you're a company driver you show up at a terminal uh, you're out on the road whatever it is Somebody will take care of it. And we're going to get to that part next, but I want to talk money first. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about how the how after we talk about the finances. So if you're a company driver, you get to a repair shop, whether it's at a terminal and Prime has, uh, you know, repair shops at Springfield, the main terminal, Pittston, Pennsylvania, Salt Lake City, Utah. We do have a repair shop in Decatur, Indiana, um, smaller shop than, than, the other three but still a repair shop where you can get a lot of the stuff done um, and then on top of that there are other locations TA truckers uh, travel centers of America um, have repair shops Speedco is a, a truck repair shop that is associated with loves um, there's various independent truck repair shops, you know, um, that, that you run into that are all across the country, diesel mechanics, whatever. And then of course there's dealers that you can get things done at. As a company driver, basically what happens is there is a road assist department. Road assist is something that you also deal with as a lease operator or an owner operator. Um, owner operator is a little bit different because, you know, you're paying for it a hundred percent, although you can bill things to the truck. And we're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, but as a company driver, you, you know, you'll deal with Road Assist. Um, road Assist will tell you where to go. Now, if you're on the side of the road or if you're limping to get to somewhere and you tell Road Assist, hey, I'm two miles from this TA that has truck repair, they're not going to tell you to, to keep going somewhere else, you know. Uh, and we'll get to this in a moment. I had a situation this morning, which is why I'm doing this video. But basically, you either are told where to go, they arrange roadside assistance if you're broken down on the side of the road, or you say, hey, I'm two miles from this, this is where I'm going, I can limp the truck to this if there's something going on with the truck. Or if you're stopping and you need preventative maintenance or oil change, for example, um, you say, hey, I'm stopping in this town uh, along the way, I need my PM done. And Road Assist is the one who handles, they, they get a work order, submitted to the the repair shop that you're at 
they get it all approved and the, the work gets done. So that's if you're a company, and you don't pay for it at all if you're a company driver. Like I said, unless you damage, unless you do something that damages the truck, if it's normal wear and tear, if it's normal preventative maintenance, things like that, you're not on the hook for it. And the process for getting repairs if you're a lease operator is similar in, in dealing with road assist, um, but the financial side is not. You are responsible for the maintenance of the truck um, if you are a lease operator. So those preventative maintenance, oil changes, greasing the chassis, replacing the windshield wipers, headlight goes out, you are responsible for that. And that's part of the difference of, of you accept a little bit less pay when you get paid by the mile as a company driver. That's why when there's a lease operator and you get a percentage of the load pay and, and say a load pays $500, $600, $700, $1,000, $3,000, um, and it pays you know easily twice to three times as much per mile. Well, that's part of the reason you're paying for your fuel you're paying for the repairs on the truck and therefore that's you you have to invest some of that money back into the truck because prime's not paying for that you as a lease operator um, are responsible for that now some of that is obviously very minor headlight bulbs windshield wipers are not a ton of money um, then there can be things that are much more expensive you know you think about an oil change well, what's that 50 bucks no a preventative maintenance oil change with everything else is somewhere in the nature of $300 uh, for one of these trucks. Now, fortunately, you don't have to do it every 5,000 miles or 3,000 miles or whatever you do on your your personal vehicle. Um, they range from 40 to 50 to 60,000 mile intervals to get your oil changed in a semi. Um, so that's positive, but it is another factor. And you do have to, again, factor for that in the additional money that you're making as a lease operator. Um, if you show up at a terminal, you don't really have to deal with uh, road assist. Road assist is what it sounds like. You're on the road and you need assistance. Um, so if you show up at a terminal and you say, hey, I need preventative maintenance, I need an oil change, you don't have to call road assist and get approval to have that maintenance done. Um, so when I'm at Decatur, which again has a shop, if I need something done, I just go and talk to the people in the shop and can get that maintenance done. When something like today happens and I have something on the side of the road, that's when you contact Road Assist and say, hey, this is what's going on. In my case, I'm trying to get, and that's why I mentioned two miles away, I was two miles from a TA. I'm going to try and get to the TA, which is two miles away. And but by the time I got there, Road Assist had already approved a work order so that when I got there, as soon as the shop had an opening, I could pull right in, get my truck repair taken care of, and um, move on with my day. And I was delayed as minimal amount of time as uh, possible. So that's a, a huge positive and, and big kudos to the Road Assist Department. Same thing happens if you're, you know, there are things that happen that you get stuck on the side of the road. Um, a tire blowout, the engine shuts down and, you know, you can't continue driving. Um, it's always best to try. And, and again, this is one of those where you have to have a little bit of mechanical knowledge. It's best to try to get to a repair shop if at all possible. Um, you know, I was two miles away from a TA, fortunately. Um, a tow bill wouldn't have been huge to get towed two miles, but the fact that I could limp the truck the two miles saved me a tow bill or saved me a roadside assistance call. Um, an actual, you know, the shop comes out with their repair truck to repair the, the, my truck in the field, um, which obviously adds a ton of cost. So if you're able to get those additional two miles, and I'll, I'll talk about my exact situation here momentarily, but that's one of those where you have to know what's going on with the truck and you have to have at least a little bit of knowledge. Um, and that's part of, you know, when you do your pre-trip inspection, you learn how that works. You do learn what all the pieces of the engine compartment are, and you should really do some take some time to investigate what all those do you know you'll be you'll learn where to check 
you know, your oil, check your coolant, check your power steering fluid, all that stuff. You'll know what the levels are. My case had to do with coolant. And I know I've done a video before um, that these trucks have uh, a heat and transit system, which uses the engine coolant, circulates it through the trailer. Now, I'm not using that system today because I, I have canola oil, which does not need heat in transit, but there are still um, hoses that run from the coolant system to the hoses that go to the trailer. And those hoses from the coolant system that lead to the back of the trailer are where I ended up with a coolant leak. And from the first spot that I stopped, which was six miles away, six, I think it ended up being 6.4 miles, from the TA is where I first stopped because I got a warning light on my dash that said warning uh, extreme low coolant level and I always carry and I, I don't know if I've talked about this before but in tanker you typically carry uh, four gallons of coolant three to four gallons of coolant is an absolute minimum because if the trailer is completely empty and you're running heat and transit and you run your engine out of the four gallons that it needs to fill the trailer you need to have that amount on the truck of coolant to replace what you lose. So you need to always have at least four gallons. So I put a gallon of coolant in 6.4 miles from the TA. Didn't, it was dark, didn't have a real good chance to take a look. Just, it happens because sometimes you'll, you'll pick up a trailer that is low and I had used coolant within the last week. So I thought, okay, it's low on coolant drove about two miles, three miles down the road and got the same warning light. Extreme low coolant. Okay, at this point now something's wrong because I didn't lose a gallon in two to, two to three miles unless there is a leak. Stopped on the side of the road again, put the gallon in, and then I took my flashlight out because it's still dark out and got over and noticed that the, the hose is running from the coolant system towards the back of the truck towards the heat and transit system that there is is a good deal of spray um, and leakage coming out of of that system so recognizing that that's what those hoses are for and that that's what it was allowed me to immediately tell the ta when i got there which is another three miles down the road and the point which i lost another gallon of coolant so it's a good thing that i had four gallons on my truck because i put three gallons in, in 6.4 miles of driving. That's a pretty quick leak. I was very fortunate to be so close to a TA. If I had been any further, I might have needed a roadside uh, assistance, actual get a truck out to make the repair on the side of the road. Um, I was told at the time it would take two hours to get into a shop. I actually got in in a little over 45 minutes and they made the repair in about 45 more minutes. So it was an hour and a half total to get that repair done, right back on the road. And uh, I got to my delivery, which is where I'm at right now, waiting uh, to unload. But that kind of gives you an idea. And, and so that's a case where, you know, I was able to limp the truck to a repair shop. In that case, Prime had to authorize, and like I said, they had a work order number already waiting for me because as soon as I stopped that second time, I called the road assist department, told them what was happening, where I was going, what TIA I was going to, got there, checked in, they told me where to line up, and by the time I was in the bay, it was all approved and, and ready for uh, the repairs to be completed. Now, I will get a bill for that. Last thing that I'll note on pay and, and paying for repairs, the one thing that's nice, you know, small repairs are small repairs. You know, like I said, a headlight, you can charge a headlight to your truck, whether you're at a terminal, whether you're out on the road at, at various, like a TA or a Petro or um, a, a Pilot or a, a, a Loves or whatever. You can charge those things to your truck. If there's a larger bill, if you get sent to, you know, like I said, this TA, if this had been a bigger issue, they had to replace the radiator. Um, I had a previous truck where I had to replace the radiator. Um, if it's a large bill, you can break it up into payments over 
a certain, you know, many number of weeks. If it's an exceptionally large bill as a lease operator, um, it's, it goes into what's called the driveline repair, and then it gets ended up taken out at the end of lease uh, as part of your lease completion incentive. Um, so you don't get, you know, if your engine blows up and you're out $30,000 as a lease operator, you think, well, geez, how am I ever going to pay that back? Well, it goes into that lease completion motion, for, uh, lease completion incentive. First of all, uh, after a certain point, success leasing, the company you're leasing the truck from, which is a, which is a subsidiary of Prime, is going to pay for 50% of that um, repair bill over a certain uh, factor a certain dollar amount and then like I said you're not going to worry about that until the end of the lease and hopefully you know hopefully you're not going to have anything that's a blown engine that would take all of your lease completion incentive away um, that would be an exceptionally rare like I said I had my radiator I think it was a thousand dollars success leasing ended up being on the hook for half of that and I want to say it ended up being Five hundred dollars that ended up taken out as a driveline repair at my end of lease for that particular truck. So that's what I have on repairs, um, on how it works if you're a company driver, how it works if you're a lease operator, how you have to pay for things, how road assist works. Hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions about it, um, as always, ask down in the script uh, in the comment section. I have an email on that comment. So I <laughs> have an email down in the description of the video you can always send your questions to me there as well um, and of course if you're interested in coming to prime in the description i'll get all this straight in the description there is a link if you want to uh, come to prime directly to the application you can uh, click on that and fill it out thanks so much for watching hope you found this informative and we'll talk to you again next time